Hey y'all, this week we're going to read Poonam's Pets by Andrew and D Diana Davies. Pictures by Paul Dowling. Just one second. Let's get it started. Poonam is in class one, and her teacher is Mrs. Wig. Poonam is a bit on the small side and a bit on the quiet side. In fact, you have to put your ear right down by her mouth if you want to hear what she is saying. All right, class one, said Mrs. Wig one day, be quiet and listen. I have something special to tell you. On Friday, said Mrs. Wig, we are going to have a pets assembly. That means you can bring your pets to school and they can go to the assembly. Everybody laughed. It was funny to think of pets in assembly. Now, said Miss Wig, how many of you have pets? Everyone in class put their hands up. Great. That's a lot of pets, said Mrs. Wig. Let's see what sort of pets we have. There were dogs, cats, and goldfish and rabbits. Ranjeev put his hand up for everything, but Poonam didn't put her hand up at all. All right, said Mrs. Wig. Have any of you got giraffes? Only Ranjeev put up his hand. Ranjeev, said Mrs. Wig. You can't have a giraffe. I have, said Ranjeev. He's got big brown spots. Poonam, said Mrs. Wig. You haven't said anything yet. What sort of pet have you got? Poonam got up very quietly and walked to Mrs. Wig's table, and Mrs. Wig put her ear down, and Poonam whispered into it. Poonam's got lions, said Mrs. Wig to class one. Poonam smiled a quiet little smile. On Friday, all the pets came to the pets assembly. Some of them in cars, came in cars, some came in boxes, some came in hutches, and some came, came in cages. Kamala, Kamal, Kamal's dog came in and in a baby carriage because he was an old dog. All the other dogs walked to school on leashes. The goldfish were very quiet and good. The cats were quite, quite well behaved except for one or two who were making horrible faces at the dogs and spitting at them. Julie's dog, Prince, wanted to sniff everyone's trousers. Gerpel's dog, Pongo, barked all the, all the time and wanted to fight everybody. I'm not sure if this pet's assembly is such a good idea after all, said Mrs. Wig. Rajiv came a little bit late and rather out of breath. He had a big lump under his sweater. What's in there, Ranjeev, said Gurple. My giraffe, said Ranjeev. Looks more like a rabbit to me, said Gurple. It's a giraffe, sh shouted Ranjeev. It's not, it's just not grown up yet. I think my dog Pongo would like to eat your giraffe, said Gurple. It was nearly time for the assembly, and everyone in class one was there except Poonam. Mrs. Wig looked at the clock. Well, said Miss Wig, I'm afraid we'll have to start. Line up quietly, please. Dogs on the left and cats on the right. Lining up quietly took quite a long time because some of the dogs got mixed up. Dogs are not very good at telling left from right. And then they all went into the hall. The hall looked beautiful with the dogs on one side and the cats on the other side. It did not matter where the goldfish sat because goldfish are very peaceful. When they when they all saw the other children looking at their pets, the children in class one felt very pleased and proud, and still Poonam had not come. Mrs. Wig went to the front of the hall. Good morning, everybody, she said. Welcome to class one's pets assembly. And then something amazing happened. The door opened and in came Poonam, and behind Poonam, walking very quietly, one behind the other in a row, were six enormous lions. All the dogs hid under the chairs. The cats opened their their eyes wide and stared. They had never seen such big cats before. Ranjeev's giraffe was very frightened and burrowed deep under his sweater. The children were frightened as well and wanted to run out. Right. Poonam and her six enormous Lions walked right to the front of the hall and the lions sat down in a row, blinking sleepily at the children. They did not look too fierce. They looked solemn and friendly and wise. Poonam went up to Mrs. Wig. Mrs. Wig bent her ear down and Poonam whispered in it. Then Mrs. Wig stood up straight. Poonam says we are not to be frightened, she said. They are very good lions. 
Poonam whispered in Mrs. Wig's ear again. Poonam says her lions will now do their act for you, said Mrs. Wig. Poonam clapped her hands. Two lions balanced their front paws on the chair on the chairs while while the lions behind stood up on their back legs, balancing with their paws on each other's shoulders. They all opened their mouths and showed their huge teeth, and Poonam gave each of them a big lion biscuit. All the children clapped and cheered. The lions sat down in a row again, looking very pleased with themselves. Poonam whispered to Mrs. Wig. Ask them yourself, Poonam, said Mrs. Wig. Poonam turned and looked at the children, then said in a very loud voice, Would anybody like to ride on my lions? The children were amazed. No one had ever heard Poonam speak in a loud voice before. So the whole school went out to the playground and the six enormous lions stood in a row. They were very big, but Poonam and Mrs. Wig helped the little ones to get up. But when it was Ranjeev's turn, he stood and looked at the ground. What's the matter, Ranjeev? said Poonam. Ranjeev whispered in Poonam's ear. What? said Poonam. I can't hear you. I'm scared, said Ranjeev. It's all right, said Poonam. I'll hold your hand. Poonam and the six enormous lions stayed all day. When it was time to go home, Poonam clapped her hands to the lions. They lined up, and Poonam and her six enormous lions went quietly home. Poonam is still a bit small and rather quiet, but when she has something important to say, she says it in a very loud voice. She never talks about her six enormous lions, and no one else has ever seen them since the day of the pets assembly. The end.